welcome back to the South Dakota Dynasty. Today the Coyotes are on the road for a game against a Pac-12 opponent, the Colorado Buffaloes. Last week they lost to South Dakota State in a very odd game. They ended up losing by three points and South Dakota State had 17 third quarter points and then we had 17 in the fourth quarter including a safety on an interception. One thing I will say, one of the coolest college traditions is Ralphie running out with the team but we will now get underway. Jared Miller went 15 for 26, 263, two touchdowns, but did throw four picks, and that was a big part of the losing effort. Colorado will start out with a three and out. Now, LaVishka Chenault will take the field for Colorado. He is one of the most talented receivers in all of the NFL, and it will be Xavier Warner and Jeremiah Glover lining up against him, and we'll have to see how the smaller corners can handle the physical athletic receiver. Colorado will start on the run game though with 15 yards. Now on third down and two from the pistol, Little will throw. He's got his tight end Akeel Jones for 10 yards and a first down. The drive stays alive as Colorado will stick in the pistol. This time Little, the quarterback, will keep it. He's not a great athlete, but he has a nice gain here. Pushed out of bounds by Ross Bukowski after 21 yards. Sticking with the pistol as this allows them to run the ball very effectively. And it'll be Mangum on the outside for the 9-yard touchdown as Colorado has an early 7-0 lead. And we'll have to see if our offense is able to respond. Last week we ran for 201 yards. Jalen Page had 33, Pierce Libby had 45, and Jared Miller actually had 65 of his own. There's Tate Wagner. He hasn't had a ton of receptions this year but still makes big plays occasionally. Second down and 10, throw outside, Cordell Hicks, the other tight end, this time has 16 yards. Jalen Page is the back and they'll go his way. He picks up a nice five yard run and it'll be second down and five. Four wide with Hicks in the slot along with Nate Went. Miller will drop back, no one gets open and he will go down a loss of eight yards on the sack. The offense We'll take the field on third down and 13 as Miller will take a shot to the end zone. He's got his man. It's Deontay Knox. He had a touchdown last week and another one this week as the corner appeared to get turned around. And Deontay Knox passes 1,000 yards receiving in his career. Little will throw outside. He's got his man Chenault. That time it was Xavier Warner in coverage. They'll move Chenault around the field so probably both Glover and Warner will line up against him. Now they'll go on a jet sweep to Stanley, and he has stopped great tackle and by Ross Bukowski to stop him short of the line to gain, and our offense will take back over with a chance to take the lead. J.R. Miller will keep it on the read option, good couple blocks downfield, and he won't slide. He likes to be physical and try and pick up those extra yardage. A split backfield as Pierce Libby checks in the game. Jared Miller will throw and it's intercepted. He has really had a ton of struggles lately with taking care of the football in this latter half of the season. He just keeps throwing more and more interceptions. They'll go back to the ground game. It's been very effective so far as Mangum picks up 13 yards that time. Two backs in the pistol this time on first down and 10. They'll lob it outside. He's got his tight end Russell and he has it inside of the 20 yard line brought down by Mikowski after 22 yards. Trip to the left now as LaVishka Chenault's little brother's in the game. They'll throw to KD Nixon though from the right side of the field to the middle. It's an 11 yard reception. Had a little five for six for 59 yards to start out. Deontay Knox will come in motion. He's got some room to run and it is a first down for the Coyotes. We definitely like to get our receivers involved in the running game. Now to be Trent Klemper on the handoff and he's brought down it looks by the face mask so that will tack on an extra 15 yards to the end of the run Jalen Page checks back in they'll give it to him he sweeps outside good block and by Bo Weaver and it's a 12 yard gain as he gets to the edge it'll be third down and eight you can see Pierce Libby actually strained his pectoral on that last drive and will not return today so that is a big loss for our running game he's been probably a more efficient back this year on third down, Trent Klimper only gets two yards, so it'll be fourth down and six as Devin West will come on for the field goal attempt. And it is good. It'll cut it to a four-point ball game. Little in the pistol. They'll go back to the ground game. Once again, sweep outside for Mangum. He will fall forward and pick up 11 yards. Colorado has a pretty good offense. They're number four in scoring offense, but actually only 115th in total offense 
And their defense really isn't super great statistically. First down and 10 though for a little heel throw. There's LaVisca Chenault once again, this time for 16 yards. I believe it was Glover in coverage that time. Now second down and three, they'll go back to KD Nixon and he has his second touchdown of the game, this time a nine yard reception as Colorado extends their lead back to two scores. Page and Ladorian Bolden, the fullback in the backfield and the pitch will go to the fullback converted from running back. He picks up nine yards. We haven't seen him much this year and he did redshirt last year, I do believe. Now Jalen Page on the counter to the outside. He's got six yards and a first down. Tate Wagner is the H-back with Page in the backfield, and Miller has some room to run. Good block by Wagner as Jerry Miller's into the open field. He's got a first down and more inside of Colorado territory. On first down and 10, they'll go back to the ground game once again, and Jalen Page is taken down by a shoestring tackle, but does pick up seven yards. Now on second down and three, they'll throw it to Bolden once again. So with Libby out, we're seeing a little more of the fullback running back hybrid play. It'll be Deontay Knox on the screen, and he's got another first down, RDR 10th in the first half. Four wide with Campbell in the slot, they'll look his way on the bubble screen, nice juke move, and he's brought down short of the goal line, but it will be goal to go. Just over a minute left in this first half, Jalen Page gets the carry, and on first down and goal, he goes into the end zone for the touchdown, as it'll be back down to a four point lead once again. Just over a minute to work with for Colorado. Let's see how quickly their offense can work. The comeback is effective once again as Chenault picks up 13 yards. It'll be second down and one now for Little. He throws, he's got Nixon. They're a very nice wide receiver duo and good power there and good fight to power through that tackle and get him inside of the red zone. Only took him about 20 seconds so far to get down the field and it'll be Mangum once again this time for 12 yards. First down and goal, they'll go to the air. Little is gonna try and throw, and he's got his man. It's Dimitri Stanley for six yards and a touchdown as Colorado extends their lead back up to 11, and we will head into halftime down by two scores. Our defense needs to get a few more stops, and our offense needs to be a little more consistent. We'll get right into the second half. If you haven't noticed, this is another double header. Our second game will be against Fresno State, but there we go, that's the type of defensive play we were looking for. Ross Bukowski on the interception is second on the season and will have great field position. First down and 10 for Miller. He'll look outside and throw to Richie Campbell. He's got seven yards as that's a new career high for Jer Miller, 2,142 yards on the season. Nate Went gets the pitch and picks up the first down as that will move the chains for the Coyotes. Trent Klemper seeing a little more action as well with Pierce Libby out. They'll throw into the flats for Tate Wagner. He tries to fight for the first down but is just shy. And we will pick it up the next play so it'll be first down and 10. Four wide set. Miller will throw behind his receiver. Lucky that wasn't intercepted. It was Makai Blackman who knocked the ball away. On third down and nine, Miller will throw, and what a play by the safety, making a diving passing breakup, and we'll have to settle for the field goal. So to be an eight point ball game, we do get it back down to a one score game, and Chenault is brought down by Rakeem Hood, but it will be enough for the first. Four wide, as Little will throw once again, he's got KD Nixon, and this time it'll be 12 yards and another first down. Trips to the left with the tight end in the slot. They'll look his way and Sylvia Weidner brings him down after a nine yard reception. Jones will come in motion as Colorado goes under center. They'll run the ball and great vision by Mangum. He's into the open field inside of the 10 and into the end zone. Bryson Williams couldn't bring him down in time and Colorado scores once again and extends their lead back up to 15. It'll be Page in the backfield on third down and six. Looks like it's gonna be some triple option. Miller will keep it and he picks up the first down but is definitely punished for it. He will stay in the game and looks to be okay as they'll give him the ball once again. He picks up eight yards this time. Klimper in the game as Wagner is the tight end. Miller will keep it once more as they're, have, they're taking away the running back in the option, but Jared Miller's making them pay. He's been very effective so far running the ball. Now quick screen outside, it's Cooper Price. 
he gets a lot of these screens. He's our quickest receiver, and he's able to pick up eight yards on that one. We near the end of the third quarter. Miller will keep it once more, and it's another first down run for him as we have 140 rushing yards now as a team. One thing to note is Jalen Page was actually hurt on that last drive, so he is out, and it looks like it may be an injury for the foreseeable future. Trenton Klemper is the only active running back we have left. Miller will throw. He's got Deontay Knox on the post route, and it's a big gain inside of the red zone. And now Deontay Knox is hurt. He has a strained pectoral, so same injury as Pierce Libby, and he will not be returning today as well. On second down and 10, it's tipped up in the air, and Cordell Hicks comes back and catches it. No real penalty there, just will give him another catch on the season. Miller's going to throw quickly, and maybe at a chance for a pass interference there as Campbell was stopped, but no flag, and Devin West will come on for the field goal attempt. And it is good, and that'll cut it to a 12-point ball game, but the, it will stay as a two-score game. Number 17, Virginia Tech loses for the second straight week as they lose this time to Pitt. From the pistol, it'll be a give to Mangum, and he hesitates and still going. He meets Warner and is brought down, but it's another good gain as he's showing some nice burst. Third down and 12, a potential big stop right here for our defense. Instead, it'll be LaVisca Chenault down the sideline for 30 yards, beating his man really bad. First down and 10 as Little will try and throw and forced out of the pocket. He'll make a mistake. It's Jax Montgomery on the pick and no one may be able to catch him. He's inside of the 20, inside of the 10, and he's going to take it all the way. 82 yards for the senior nickel cornerback as Tyler Little throws his second interception. We will kick the extra point and cut it to a five-point game. Next play, that's intercepted. It's Travon Simmons, the backup free safety, making a big play. And that's our third forced interception. And now the Coyotes have a chance to take the lead. It'll be Klemper on the run. Nice gain there. He tries to fight for extra yardage and gets a little bit. It'll be eight yards. First down and 10, play action. Fake to Klemper, throw outside. It's intercepted by Colorado this time. Three straight drives, three straight interceptions. As this game is getting crazy, a bunch of interceptions, three straight interceptions on three straight possessions. Luckily, that one was not a pick six, but Colorado was a chance to extend their lead. Little will go play action, and Hood will just come up. No one getting open downfield. They sent everyone deep, and it will be a sack for the senior linebacker. Trips to the left on second down and 16. And in tight coverage, somehow Little will fit in the ball to KD Nixon. And on third down and two, this will be a big penalty. It's a false start called on Colorado. So that'll back him up five yards. It'll be third down and seven now. Little's going to go to the air outside for Chenault. And it's the other Chenault, Levante Chenault, who is not able to pick up the first down. Now the field goal unit will come on. The kick is away, and that might have been good from a much greater distance as Colorado extends their lead to eight points. So we're going to need a touchdown and a two-point conversion. What a great start to the drive here. J.R. Miller right up the middle. He has 50 yards on that run and is over 100 yards rushing today and has a new series high in rushing yards. Mike Algram, the senior receiver, a lot of seniors making plays today, picks up seven yards. We have a chance here for a big play as Trenton Klimper gets the carry. He's got 13 yards. It will be goal to go. We'll need a touchdown and a two-point conversion like I said. Here's Jer Miller. He's going to keep it. He is hit down hard, taking a lot of punishment today. Klimper is the back. He will get the carry, try and sweep it outside, runs through a defender. He's into the end zone, and now it will be up to a two-point conversion to potentially force overtime. We'll go trips to the right with Campbell and Hicks in the slot. Miller looking for someone to get open. No one gets open. And a great play as pressure was getting there. Thomas knocks it away. And it'll be up to an onside kick now. It'll be Kenny Matson. He kicks it. And it's recovered by Dimitri Stanley. He recovers it. And now we have two timeouts left. It'll be Mangum to the outside. He's going to take it. And the defense overcommitted. 
he's gonna score from 42 yards out as Colorado now has a two score lead, only 27 seconds left. Miller's just gonna have to chuck it deep and get another onside kick. And looking for a Hicks, it's intercepted by Maddox. He's still returning it, and that will do it. The third interception on the day for J.R. Miller. Another strange game as Jaron Mangum, 185 yards and three touchdowns. We had one of our only a few pick sixes, I believe the second one we've ever had. And three interceptions by Jaron Miller as he's now thrown maybe 11 or so in the last few games, which is just crazy. Both of our running backs went down. Deontay Knox went down. Trent Klimper played pretty well in, in relief. Jaron Miller's biggest contribution, though, today was definitely in the run game. Over 100 yards, the first time he's ever done that. But we'll go ahead and move quickly into the second game of the doubleheader. We'll return home, and this time we'll be facing a Mountain West opponent in the Fresno State Bulldogs. Fresno State is 7-3 and, and one of the best teams in the Mountain West. They have a very potent rushing offense and it's going to be a tough game today but if we can play as well as we did against Colorado but also take care of the football then we definitely have a chance to win today. First play of the game, Jalen Cropper, he goes in a circle there up in the air but picks up four yards. Now Hanner will throw it he goes outside. He's got his receiver, Coleman. It looked like he may have stepped out of bounds. Might have been forced out, though. Either way, it will be 14 yards. Four wide as Fresno State's going to the air more than I expected early. But they will take off as Hayner picks up 12 yards on the quarterback scramble. A three wide set to the right. They'll go straight up the middle. There's Rivers. He's a smaller back, but he is quick and very explosive. He picks up 12 yards on his first carry. Seems like Fresno State wants to use a lot of the pistol, similar to Colorado did. It allows them to run the ball up the middle and to the outside very effectively. Second down and six, the receiver will come in motion as they will pitch it outside in a great play by our defense. It's Bryson Williams and Rakeem Hood who tackle him and it's a loss of three yards. Third down and nine, the tight ends in the slot. They'll go draw play to Rivers and he's met as Williams can't bring him down. Bukowski finally stops him but it is enough for a first down. It'll be goal to go from around the three yard line. Hanner's gonna take off and run. He'll get into the end zone for the four yard rushing touchdown as Fresno State takes their first drive and goes two minutes and 30 seconds for a touchdown. No Jalen Page today. We saw he's out for four weeks, so he probably will not be returning for the rest of the season. That's a big loss, but hopefully Pierce Libby and Jalen, er, and Trent Klimper, I should say, can play well in relief. There is a big catch by Nate Went. He's done a much better job this year taking care of the drops and not having as many as he did last year. Now to be Pierce Libby on the carry, good vision as he's able to pick up 14 yards. Trying to focus more in this game on running the ball, so hopefully we can take the ball out of Jer Miller's hands and he won't be able to throw as many interceptions and it allows us to use him as a runner. As he showed, he's very effective throughout this whole series, but especially in this last game against Colorado. Now they'll have to go to the yard third down, and it's a big play inside of the 10 yard line. Dion Gilbert for 20 yards. He's seen a reduced role this year, but he still makes occasionally, he makes those big plays. Two yards for Trent Klimper. Now to be twin tight end on third down and goal, and nowhere to go for J.R. Miller, who'll lose five yards as it was a great play by Kevin Atkins and perfect option defense. Devin West from straight away and he will kick it straight down the uprights. And we have a studio update and it's one that's gonna shake the college football world. Number one Clemson loses by four at home to Boston College. And following that up, number six Oklahoma actually loses to Kansas State. Currently, I believe LSU and Arizona State are number one in the polls. And they're both still undefeated, the only undefeated Power 5 teams left. It'll be a throw for Wheat Falls. He picks up 17 yards there. Now trips to the right from the shotgun as it'll be third down and two. Pitch outside. Here's Rivers. And he will run out of bounds after seven yards. And a first down. Fresno State will go under center now with four wide. And on third down, they'll throw once again as it is a catch for Pope inside of the 20, inside of the 10, and brought down by Bukowski after 24 yards. 
First down and goal, draw play, and it'll go to Rivers. Martells, the defensive tackle, gets turned around and can't bring him down as Fresno State now extends their lead to 14 to three. Here's Pierce Libby on the ground and is just shy of that first down marker but picks up 10 yards. Hopefully he can finish this season strong, especially with no Jalen Page. Now Miller is hit down hard but picks up the first and continues the drive. Second down and 11 is Klimper's in the backfield and it'll be a screen outside for Cordell Hicks as I feel like he can be very effective on those. He's a very good after the catch tight end. Third down and two, they'll give it to Libby. He has the first and it's our fourth third down conversion. He has six yards on that play. They'll go to the ground game once again, this time on first down, nice spin move as it'll be the junior running back for 13. Deion Gilbert comes in motion. They'll fake it to Libby. Pitch outside for Deion Gilbert. He's trying to extend it to the outside. He makes a man miss. He's going to take it all the way for the touchdown. Deion Gilbert for the score. A great late pitch by Jer Miller and a perfectly run triple option. And great job by Deion Gilbert on finding the end zone. Now a screen pass for Rivers on third down. And it will be another first down conversion for the Bulldogs. Three down linemen as the Coyotes will bring five and Hayner will give up on the play immediately as maybe he saw the pressure was coming and didn't like what he saw. So it will be a punt forced by the Coyote defense. Groan hanging is the pulling guard and a nice block as Libby picks up five yards as we go over 100 yards rushing as a team. Second down and five, throw to the flats. There's Mike Algram, one of the receivers farther down on the depth chart, but he's a senior, so as the season is winding down, we're trying to get him a little more involved. Second down and five, time to throw, and Cordell Hicks drops it. It was a perfect throw down the seam, and it's Jared Miller's first incompletion as Hicks just could not hang on to the football. That would have been a big play instead of be a screen pass for Pierce Libby. Great block by the offensive line. They get out into the open field, and Pierce Libby picks up 19 yards. He's looked very good today. Second down and 10 as we near the end of the first half and just throwing the football away. Somehow Jerry Miller gets that football out of there. Third down and 10, four wide set. Algram in the slot. They'll throw outside looking for Cooper Price and it's deflected by Gaston as he had the inside leverage on Price. 40 seconds left for Fresno State. They'll have to work quickly if they want any more points. But there's Jax Montgomery once again. That's his third interception on the season. He had one in that Colorado game that nearly allowed us to pull off the comeback. We have 30 seconds to work with. There's Nate Went, and it's 17 yards. And we're in great position to try and take the lead to end the first half. Lob outside. It's Gilbert! The defensive back didn't make a play on the ball, and it's a great thrown ball by J.R. Miller as we will head into halftime up by three points. A huge momentum shift by Jax Montgomery, Deion Gilbert, and J.R. Miller. Opening the second half, it'll be the Coyotes who will open with the ball as Gilbert loses it, and it's recovered by Campbell in the end zone, and he's going to take it out, and he's going to get a big return on it. A chance for a huge mistake turns into a 60-yard return for Richie Campbell. On first down and 10, it'll be a run outside. Good job by the pulling guard as it's a 10-yard gain for Pierce Libby. On second down and five, Libby's in the backfield with the Hicks in the slot. They'll go straight up the middle. It's another good run for 11 yards by the junior. He is at 78 yards today so far. Second down and three. Somehow the ball gets out. A crazy late pitch. Somehow Campbell gets it and he'll take it into the end zone. J.R. Miller, when he, even when he's not on and he's throwing interceptions, he still is making plays. And that's great to see. He's a gutsy performer. Pedro Martels tracks down the quarterback, but Hayner is still able to pick up 22 yards. On first down and 10. It'll be Rivers, actually Mims who gets it. He'll take it all the way untouched into the end zone. Great downfield blocking and poor pursuit by the Coyotes. Allows Fresno State to cut it to a three score game. We do still have the lead though. The pitch will go to Hicks. Once again, he's somewhat gotten involved in these option plays but just does not keep the proper depth. 
on the option. Now Miller will keep it to the outside. He gets a block from Wagner. He's inside of Fresno State territory, moving slowly down the sideline, but he's got 44 yards. He had 50-yard run last week, and now 44 today. He is making plays down the field in the running game, which is great to see and a great sign for next season and for the rest of the season. We aren't able to pick up the first down, so be West on once again, and he's two for two today as that extends it back to a six-point lead. It'll be a counter play as Rivers cuts it straight up the middle. He's brought down by Williams and Bukowski, but picks up 12 yards and a first. It'll be third down and six, so a big chance for our defense here. They'll go draw a play to Rivers, and he stops short Bukowski with another huge tackle. And we will head into the fourth quarter looking for a second win on the season, and we're holding a six-point lead. On fourth down and one though, Fresno State will stay on the field. It looked like they were gonna punt before the end of the quarter, but their offense will stay on, and it's Juan Rodriguez who picks up the first. Three down lineman under center. It will be a give to Rivers. He is hit down hard by Ross Bukowski, but it's still a big gain. Now they go empty from under center, a quick drop and a quick throw. It's Wheat fall inside the five yard line, brought down by Williams and Hood, but it's a 13 yard gain. Three tight end, they'll go from the goal line set and they'll throw it to the fullback, Greg James. He's got it for a three yard touchdown and Fresno State will retake the lead pending the extra point. So Fresno State is up by one with seven minutes left. Our offense has a chance to retake the lead. Let's see if they continue to rely on the ground game. A good run there by Pierce Libby. They'll go back to him once again and he's got another first. He's played one of his best games on the season today. Third down and six. It looks like we're gonna keep it on the ground. Miller's gonna keep it once again, and it's another first down. This time, 18 yards for the sophomore quarterback, 78 yards today. He has nearly 200 yards rushing in the last two games, but that is a big negative play as it was King who forced the tackle for loss. Third down and 12, let's see if we can work the magic. Here's Cooper Price. He's got 11 yards, but not enough for the first down. There's a decision to make. Do we go for it? It looks like Devin West is gonna come on to try and retake the lead, running the clock. It's about a 40 yard field goal, and it is no good. It was just short. We'll see how close it was. Devin West has made it from further than that distance before, and it bounces off the crossbar. So we're gonna have to rely on our defense to get a stop here. It's Rivers straight up the middle. It's a first down. We'll use our first timeout. One more first down will end this game. They'll go to Rivers and he has it. We'll use our final timeout, but Fresno State is able to take some knees and run out the rest of the clock. On first down, they'll come out in the victory formation. Hayner will take the knee. And that will do it as Fresno State escapes the upset attempt. We lose by one. Ronnie Rivers is your player of the game. He was excellent. They used a lot of draw plays, and it was very effective. Jer Miller and our running game, Pierce Livia, was very effective. But Devin West, football is a game of inches, and we saw it there on his field goal attempt. I think if it was an inch further, it would have gone through as it just bounced off that crossbar. It's a disappointing second to last game of the season. We had a chance for our second win. It would have been a huge upset for us and maybe a big momentum shift for this program. Instead, we'll have to just take away the positives here. How competitive we stayed. We forced another interception and our running game had one of its best performances and hopefully we can continue that moving forward. Fresno State scored seven points in each quarter, and one thing to keep in mind is we had zero points in the fourth quarter, as we just could not do enough to win today. Dion Gilbert is our player of the game. He had two touchdowns, one on the ground, and one through the air. We will have one more game, as that was a disappointing senior day, and it will be against North Dakota. We beat them last year in comeback fashion, and probably the most exciting game in this series and it's gonna be a tough one. They still have not won a game as an FBS program. They've played two different quarterbacks this year, 
and hopefully we can win. They're the least talented team that we play this season, and you can see they have been blown out, especially in their final half of the season. One thing to keep an eye on, Bob Nielsen's job security is very low. He's on the hot seat right now, and I'm not even sure if a win against North Dakota will save his job. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Even if he is fired, the series will continue, and we'll have to see who takes over for the veteran coach. Pierce Libby is now our leading rusher. Jer Miller is up to third after two very strong performances running the ball. And Deontay Knox, nearly 500 yards receiving. He is looking to break his career high from last year. Bryson Williams is our leading tackler. Jackson, Harvey, and Sylvia Widener lead us in tackles for loss. And then it's Widener and Hansen in terms of sacks. And then Jax Montgomery has three interceptions. Cameron Leak is the running back. He's a true freshman. A ton of true freshmen are starting for this North Dakota team. Bobby Davis, their tight end. Brady Booker is a receiver. And we'll have to see how much that infusion of young talent helps them. Dennis Burkhart is one very interesting guy for them. He's a big defensive tackle. He was a three-star prospect. And North Dakota beat out North Dakota State for him. They fought very hard to get him. And he's been an impact in his true freshman season. But it was a disappointing couple of games. We were very close to winning, but you can also take away the positives, how competitive we stayed. In both of those games, we've been much more competitive this year. But I hope you did enjoy today's episode. These double headers are a lot of fun to make, getting two games in in one episode. I will see you next time for the final game of season two. Have a great rest of your day.